According to the findings of recent research, the Voyager spacecraft, which are almost 40 years old and are currently located billions of miles away from Earth, are still generating important discoveries, a finding that was only made possible because of the courageous Voyager probes. Keep an eye out for today's video, in which we will discuss what Voyager discovered deep among the reaches of space. A totally new type of electron burst is described in a report that was recently published in the Astronomical Journal. This finding was made possible by the exploratory efforts of the Voyager probes. These explosions are occurring in the interstellar medium, which is a region of space characterized by an excruciatingly low density of matter. They are being reflected and amplified to high speeds by advancing shock waves produced by the Sun. This is something that is occurring to cosmic ray electrons that are making their way through this distant area. This mechanism in which shock waves drive particles is not in and of itself anything that has not been done before. What is novel, however, is the fact that these bursts of electrons are arriving very far in front of the shock wave that is moving forward and that this is happening in a region of space that is supposed to be quite quiet. Astrophysicist Don Gurnett Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were both sent into space in 1977 and despite the passage of so much time, they continue to provide significant contributions to the scientific community's ability to perform important research. These probes are currently studying the uncharted waters beyond the heliopause, which is the zone between the hot solar plasma and the cooler interstellar medium at the outer reaches of the solar system. Previously, these probes were used to investigate active volcanoes on Jupiter's moon, Io, and to take breathtaking photographs of Saturn's rings. The current distance between Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 is 14.1 billion miles and 11.7 billion miles respectively. The probes were launched within 16 days of one another, but they were sent on different trajectories during their respective sojourns through the solar system. Both Voyager 1 and 2 have now passed through the heliopause boundary. Voyager 1 in 2012 and Voyager 2 in 2018. According to the findings of the study, they are currently passing through a zone that is part of what is known as the very local interstellar medium. The Voyager space probes are the man-made items that have traveled the farthest from Earth. Gurnett is adamant that the Voyager probes are traveling through interstellar space, which literally means the medium between the stars, as he explained by phone. Some may quibble about the term interstellar medium and claim that the Voyager probes are still technically inside the solar system, but Gurnett is adamant that the Voyager probes are in fact traveling through interstellar space. Gurnett stated, but of course I'm biased, despite the fact that we won that debate. According to him, the pressure of the gas that is present where the Voyager probes are located is equivalent to the pressure of the gas that we would anticipate being present in the space between the stars. According to him, this indicates that the probes are currently operating within the interstellar medium. The claim that Voyager 1 had entered interstellar space was first made public by Gurnett and his colleagues in 2012, and NASA validated this assertion the following year. Before the NASA probes entered this region of space many years ago, we believed it may get downright dull and that nothing changes out there. We were wrong on both counts. However, what we discovered is that it is not at all tranquil and quiescent. The interstellar medium has significant things happening. Because of the Sun's coronal mass ejections, stellar shockwaves are currently making their way into this region of space as was demonstrated by earlier studies. These extremely powerful events launch hot gas and energy into space, where they travel at breakneck speeds toward the heliopause and the interstellar medium. According to Gurnett, even though these shock waves travel at a speed of nearly 1 million miles per hour, it still takes more than a year for them to arrive at the heliopause, and it takes another half a year for them to arrive at the Voyager probes. To give you an idea of how far away the probes are right now, consider the fact that it takes approximately 20 hours for a Voyager signal to reach Earth when it travels at the speed of light. According to what is described in the new research report, these shockwaves are making it possible for the interstellar medium to exhibit a behavior that has never been observed before. This behavior consists of bursts of electrons arriving far in front of the moving shockwaves. Herbert Funston, a space scientist at Los Alamos National Laboratory who was not involved with the new study, explained in an email that the study is unique in that it looks at several large solar storms that punch through the bubble that the Sun carves out of the interstellar medium and extends far beyond Pluto. The study is unique 
in that it looks at several large solar storms that punch through the bubble that the Sun carves out of the interstellar medium and extends far beyond Pluto. Funston Because the Voyager spacecraft are currently in the interstellar medium, they are peering into the bubble and the shocks that cross the bubble border from the outside. This provides a one-of-a-kind and peaceful observation location that we are unable to access from within the bubble itself. Instruments on board the Voyager probes specifically intended to detect cosmic rays were able to pick up on brief surges of energy like this. NASA was thinking ahead, and this is exactly the sort of thing the probes were designed to do. In terms of what is taking place, electrons in the VLISM are ricocheting off magnetic field lines in the interstellar plasma, also known as ionized gas, and being redirected by these lines. According to Gurnett's explanation, magnetic field lines in the interstellar medium are almost entirely composed of straight lines. The process by which we were able to identify the electron bursts was when the shock waves made their initial contact with the magnetic field lines that were traveling through the Voyager spacecraft. There is a leap at the shock caused by the shock wave, which reflects and energizes a few of the cosmic ray electrons. The shock wave only lightly contacts the magnetic field line. In point of fact, it would appear that this contact speeds up the electrons, propelling them in front of the moving shock wave. These tremors are referred to as interstellar foreshocks by the researchers who authored the study. As a consequence of this, the electrons that have been supercharged are moving around 670 times faster than the shock waves that first propelled them into the heliopause. This indicates that they are being accelerated to speeds that are very close to those of relativistic particles. This event was described by Gurnett as being analogous to a game of ping-pong, with the electron serving as the ball and the shock in the magnetic field acting as a paddle. It's interesting to note that the probes also picked up on the shock waves themselves, which showed up anywhere from 13 to 30 days following the electron spikes. Funston compared this phenomenon to seeing light reflected from the cloud of a distant explosion and then hearing the boom at a later time. This is akin to seeing light reflected from the cloud of a faraway explosion. The amount of time that it takes to see the cloud and hear the boom provides vital information about the qualities of the interstellar medium and the properties of the punch-through of the shock wave into the interstellar medium, according to one explanation. Previously, astronomers have described shock waves as pushing electrons, but such interactions took place at the location where the shock wave was occurring. According to Gurnett, this is a new phenomenon because electron bursts are occurring before the shock. Previously, this had never been observed. He explained that this was a brand new process and that the shock was what accelerated the electrons. However, the shock has not yet reached the spacecraft. Therefore, it is a predecessor which we are going to refer to as the foreshock. According to Funston, these occurrences are extremely uncommon, but they are offering tantalizing insights concerning the effects that these shocks have on the interstellar medium. However, more data will be needed to better understand these results, he said. This includes additional data from Voyager 2, which hasn't been in the interstellar medium for a long time, as well as data from NASA's upcoming IMAP mission, which is scheduled for launch in 2024. Not just on the fringes of our neighborhood, but also near other stars, particularly exploding stars, the new work has the potential to increase our knowledge of the complex interactions that occur between shock waves and cosmic radiation. These findings may also give fresh information on the types of exposures that astronauts might anticipate when working in space, which is an important potential application of these findings. Is there no end to the universe? Please let us know your thoughts in the comment box down below. And with that, I'll see you all tomorrow. We truly hope that you had a good time watching the film. Additionally, we rely on the support of our audience. Therefore, viewers, please subscribe to our channel so that you can witness more incredible evaluations.